Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to have to speak up because I can't see you out there. <laughs> I want to share with uh, with you one little girl that I met yesterday at Ronald McDonald House. She's about, I think she said she was either finishing the seventh grade or going into the seventh grade, had a little language problem. But she has her foot in this contraption and there were screws and I, I don't know exactly what happened, but I asked her how long she was going to be here and she said she would be at Ronald McDonald House until November 7th. So remember the families at RMH. Some of these folks have, you know, have their lives have stopped to be with their children, you know, to to give them a better life. And I don't I don't know anything about the family. It was mom and the little girl. Dad may or may not be in the picture. I don't know. But this poor woman is, you know, stuck at Ronald McDonald House for the next three months. Is that right? Yes, November. Yes. So remember the families at, at RMH. Um, she otherwise looks healthy, very, very polite little girl, but she's going to be doing school online and she's in a place that she does not know very well. So remember the families at RMH as you pray. Let's stand and sing. The first song we're going to do is There's Power in the Blood and Amen. Isn't that a great thing? Amen. Yes, so let's sing. We're going to jazz it up.
He's always right with us. Praise the Lord. Let's sing, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of you today. It's a wonderful, cool day. It's so cool. I'm freezing. If it keeps this up, I'm going to have to dig out my sweaters. Keep thinking thoughts like that, you know, and somehow it'll get cooler. Thank you all for allowing me some time off. I will be taking some other time off in the fall. Uh, I was able to go and to uh, to visit my church that I grew up in because one of our good friends of our family had her 90th birthday, and uh, we wanted to make sure she she calls herself and my mom uh, ordained her this as my Oklahoma mother. Uh, so we went to hers. Got to see a lot of my other mothers as I have been growing up and uh, different people who came up and said, oh, I used to babysit you. <laughs> and uh, that was real nice. Got to see some people I haven't seen in about 40 years. And uh, that's always good to see people. And to thank God, as I will say this to you, thank God that I grew up in a church where I knew everybody. And a church that knew me, and a church that, that has had so many good memories and a church that has not changed since I was there in uh, Sunbeams, okay? Uh, but physically, the, the church has changed some, but not much. And it's just nice to be able to go back and see everybody and uh, be excited and have them listen and hear about things that are going on. So I thank you for that. On a Friday in July of 2007, 14-year-old David Milia stumbled upon people giving away hugs outside a movie theater. Strange, he thought, and refused to take them up on their offer. Hours later, as the idea bounced back and forth like a pinball in his mind, he found himself intrigued. The next day, David walked Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago 
where nothing comes free, dispensing hugs while sporting a t-shirt with words, free hugs applied in neon colored duct tape. Hugging hooked David. Every day since his first foray on Michigan Avenue, David has worn the words free hugs somewhere on his person, on his shirt, his sleeve, even his forehead. In 2013, as a business management major at DePaul University, David published a book on the experience as a free hugger and with the proceeds traveled the following summer to 13 cities logging 2,500 hugs on the tour. We are a standoffish world. Don't touch me, I won't touch you. Don't come to my door, I won't come to your door. We don't relate to each other. We don't work with each other. We are not kind, and that comes from the fact that we're not good. So today I want to talk with you about the fruits of the Spirit. And I want to talk with you about kindness and goodness. And by the way, thank you for treating Alan, uh, who was here last week, treating him well. Uh, I've known him since he was a little tadpole preacher boy. And I know his dad. His dad is a very missional-minded pastor. Works the other side of Dallas and does a lot of good things there. And uh, I'm just thankful that uh, we were able to have him back. Let me ask you, are you just nice or are you kind? There is a difference. People are considered nice when they are polite, when they open the door for other people. You know, that, that still freaks some people out. Some ladies think that I'm insulting their feminist side when I open the door for them or that I want something or something else. But, you know, older ladies always consider that something that is unusual, <coughs> but very welcomed. And then, you know, in our society, we're not very polite. How many times do you hear somebody say, excuse me, after a burp in our society? Very rarely, what they usually say is, wow, did you hear that? <laughs> Kindness is a way deeper than niceness. Kindness goes out of its way. A nice person can ask, are you hungry when you come to their house? A kind person will bring out food for you without you even having to ask. They will give it to you. I remember when I started into the ministry in Southeast Texas and the ladies I would go by and, and see would bring me out a cup of coffee in a china cup and it would be 400,000 degrees <laughs> and I had to prop that thing on my knee while they also brought me out a piece of pie and not let their wonderful china cup get broken but it was never an ask it was always I sat down and it appeared. You never hear someone say an act of niceness, but you always hear people say the act of kindness. As believers, many times we are nice, but not kind. You know, you teach people something. You can bring them a fish or you can teach them how to fish. Another form of welfare is what most people consider the church. People come by looking for money. Ah, oh, I just need a 20. When it first started that we had uh, liquor here in Irving, I noticed that people came by and asked for the appropriate money that would let them go across the street and buy a case of beer. 
And y'all may have seen me over there pricing the cases of beer. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I don't like that the church is considered another form of welfare. I don't mind helping people. You know that. We help people. Compared to the size of this church, our giving to people is enormous. We give to that. We give to our missions offerings. We are all about giving. You may be nice to someone and still not like them and still not treat them with care and concern. It happens all the time in this world. Let's face it, folks. We all have our church face. We all try to get it. You know, I, I don't know that you carry it in your purse or in your wallet, but there is a church face. And we walk in, and I'm not downgrading it, because a lot of times it's a good thing. But, you know, most preachers are expected to be nice. However, what nice means to some people is that we have no backbone. They make us a pushover. That's not what a pastor is called to be. But he's also called not to be rude. And I must apologize to you. Sometimes my human nature takes over and I'm a little bit on the rude side. I'm glad I didn't get any amens there. <laughs> Kindness, as we will learn, is that Christians are supposed to take care of and act on that caring for the best life of those God has called us to have compassion for. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 begins, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. We've looked at that. Kindness, goodness. What we are going to look at today are the spiritual fruits that are connected. They're connected, and if I would think about a fruit that they would be, it would be grapes because they grow in bunches. They grow together. These gifts are kindness, which is the result, and goodness, which is the source. Not only are spiritual fruits created in us, they are to flow out of us, and their fresh spiritual aroma should fill our lives. You know what? You walk into the produce section, where the fruit is. And if they just got in a new load, especially peaches, apples, something like that, you can smell. And if you don't smell a particular smell, you at least smell the freshness of fresh fruit. That's what we're supposed to be producing in life. People need to notice that when we walk around, there is an aroma a good smell, not as much physical as spiritual. We create something. So, is your life producing the scent of fresh fruit, fresh God-centered fruit, fresh kindness and goodness? That's what we're going to look at today. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for what it says to us about kindness and goodness. Lord, there's so much in the Bible about being that kind of a person. And Lord, that's kind of fallen out of favor. So we pray that we may change it, that we may search for it out of our relationship with You. In Jesus' name, Amen. First, let's talk about what is the result, and that is kindness. Kindness uh, begins in adopting uh, the Holy Spirit into our lives. You can't be truly kind just trying to do it on your own. You've got to act the Holy Spirit into your life, and none of these fruits come out of your own self, 
But if they're truly the Holy Spirit, they come out of Him. And they will work and they will grow. The Holy Spirit working through your life. His thoughts beyond ours. And uh, we see the world as He sees it. Develops into compassion for those in trouble and those in need. When you see somebody who is in need, you have care and compassion. Now, I think you have to temper that. Some of you, as we think about spiritual gifts in the days ahead, have the spiritual gift of giving. And God has given that to you. And you will always be looking for a way to give to others. I temper that and I temper this by saying, be sure that you don't let people take advantage of that. This does not mean that you need to go to the bank and get a roll of ones and be passing out ones to everybody you see on the side of the street. Because I'm going to tell you that person will be there today and they will be there tomorrow. And some of them have two arms and two legs. And they are perfectly capable of getting jobs instead of out on the side of the street begging for money. Now, some of them aren't. Do you know how you determine that? You ask God, show me today who I need to be giving to. And you know what you do? You give to them. Okay? God will show you. I am, I am a firm believer in that. I have said, God, show me who to give to. Show me who not to give to. But let me care about them anyway. Now, he usually shows this by having that person on the side of the road have a dog with them. <laughs> no. He usually does this by just saying, Brian, give that guy something. And I say, okay. I try, to, I try to be very quick to say it because my human nature says no. My human nature says, I'm going to work. Why can't they go to work? But we need to be caring. Compassion for those in trouble, those in need. We respond with open-ended generosity like God did with the offer of His only Son, Jesus. These good thoughts generate kindness in what we plan to do. You work on that. You know, it's nothing to say that God doesn't continually show you somebody and eventually you say, well, God has been showing me this person. God has been showing me this person. One of the things that you can do is not give them money because money says they're going to use it on what they want to use it on. And you can always give them, go buy them food, buy them something to drink in this weather. The best thing you can buy them to drink in this weather is a bottle of water. But care about them. Show them that. I know we were talking about this Wednesday at business session. We were talking about how at one time, we gathered a group of us together. It was right after we came back from New York and we went downtown with sack lunches. Well, then our wonderful Dallas City Council decided that that was illegal. And not wanting to be put in prison or jail for doing a kind act, what we determined was, and say anything about us going with a cooler full of water, so we went down with a cooler for, full of water. And I want to tell you, I was surprised how many shrubs and sections of that kind of stuff that I drove by every day that had plenty of people hiding underneath them for the shade to get cool. And they willingly accepted a bottle of water and a prayer. Folks, it's time for us to do that again. So you'd be looking for, you know, some broad-brimmed hats or some bandanas. 
course, if we got bandanas, we might look like a gang. We could be God's gang. Kindness is important for Christians because it reflects God's goodness and His love. And it helps them to live in community with each other. It is also a tremendous witness in an evil world. We should always show kindness. Just like Brother Kyle was talking about this morning. Simple act. Do you know how much people remember simple acts of kindness? If you show it to them or if they see you showing it to others. Churches need to be more concerned with showing acts of kindness than in building new sanctuaries or hiring more staff or putting on, yes, or putting on huge productions that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Amen. Jesus is not honored in that, and I'm sorry. So we need to honor Him by doing what He would do, what He did. He went out to the highways and the byways and found the poor, found the sick, found those who were leprous, found those who were having horrible lives, found those who thought they had bought everything they needed, but their lives were still lonely. And Jesus ministered out of His goodness in kindness. That's what we need to be doing. That's what we need to be about. So, we think about that. Let's look at some more scriptures. Colossians 3.12 So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion and kindness. When you go out to do missionary work, you have to get quiet and get your mind ready and talk with the Master. Because you and I can't show that kindness. We need to be a funnel of Jesus working through us. This should be the result of salvation in our relationship with Jesus. Jesus told us, love your enemies. And be kind to those who despise you. The law said that a Roman soldier carrying something could come up to you as an Israeli or a Jew and say, carry this. And the law said that you had to carry it for at least a mile. If you didn't, they could arrest you. So what Jesus said, go the extra mile. Do you know that's where that phrase comes from? Carry it more. You know why you do that? You do that so that the Roman soldier, the Gentile, looks at you and says, wait a minute, the, the end of the mile was right back there. And you can say, oh no, I'll keep carrying it for you. And it totally blows their mind. You know what, Christians? We need to be blowing the world's minds in what we do. And then when they ask, well, why are you doing that? You say, well, Jesus wanted me to do that. Jesus wants me to care about you, and I do care about you. Luke 6.35 Love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. Folks, don't let your right hand know what your left hand does. Don't do something out of caring to get noticed. Do it to get noticed by Him. Amen. And you know what? You know what the Bible teaches us? The Bible teaches us that we can have one of two rewards. We can have the reward down here and having everybody say, oh, you're so awesome. I wish I was as cool as you. Or you could have the reward that is to come when you stand before your maker, when you stand before your Lord and he looks down at you and says, well done, 
my good and faithful servant. Amen. And that's eternal. Newspapers and websites and social media. Here today, gone tomorrow. Go back through your social media and see how much stuff you forget. Let God honor you. Well done, you fed. Well done, you took water. Well done, you went to the hospital. Well done. Well done. Do it to please Him and to honor Him and get your reward. Your reward will outlast you. Deuteronomy 15, 7 through 8. You must not be hard hearted or tight fisted towards your poor brother. Instead, you are to open your hand to him and freely loan him enough for whatever he needs, for whatever need he has. Don't be stingy. You say, well, Pastor, I only have a certain amount of money. Well, you know what? Your pastor only has a certain amount of money. And I know that. But do you know what? To make America great again is to make America more like God and Jesus again. We're not about big buildings. We don't need all that. We need big hearts. You know, we could get away with a lot less. We open our eyes to needs and work with others to see those needs be met. The homeless, responsible giving. So a lot of times you can give through organizations and do it responsibly. Don't just give out money. Don't just try to ease your conscience. Find out what God wants you to do. When you have an organization around you, evaluate it. There are websites that I can steer you to that will evaluate that ministry as to whether that ministry is doing what it's supposed to be doing. And not just spending its money wildly. Let's make sure we put our money where it can do the most work. Don't support addiction. Don't support the liquor store. If moved inside, act upon it. I've already said to you, one of the things that I have to do is when God says, Brian, go take care of that. I have to go do it right away. Because if I stop and think about it, I go, well, wait a minute. Let me see, God. This is not the best neighborhood for me to get out of my car in. God, this is not really, you know, look at that guy. He's perfectly capable of doing things. I'm not doing this to my pride. I'm just doing this to tell you what a man told me one time. A man that, we took, that I took care of, that I bought some food for. He told me, Oh, no. He said, you don't need to do that. I'm okay. I ate yesterday. You know what? I ate yesterday. I ate today. I'm going <laughs> to eat tomorrow. I ate last week. you got to get busy interacting and caring. But don't do it without praying. Say, friend, can I pray with you? Let me pray with you. Okay? And you don't have to be some King James huge prayer. Just pray for them by name and pray that God will be with them and pray that they will continue to find God's goodness in this world. Because some of them are in the situation they're in because of the way people have treated them. Because things have gone wrong in their lives. Okay? And we need to heal that wound. Because Jesus was always healing wounds. We need to be healing that wound and helping those people. Okay? 
So, Jesus in kindness. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him. A centurion is a Roman soldier who was a commander over a hundred, usually a hundred soldiers, and appealed to him saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. And Jesus said to the centurion, you may go as you have believed. Let it be done for you. Jesus was amazed at the faith of this centurion because he said to the centurion, okay, I'll come to your house. And the centurion said, no, 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 you're a rabbi. That, that, that wouldn't look good. You can heal my servant right where you stand. Because he said, because I command soldiers and I know you are God, you know, you are moving right along here. You are, you are uh, God's representative. You could heal them from where you are. And Jesus was amazed at his faith. You may go as you believe, let it be done for you. At the very hour, healed. Compassion, goodness, kindness, Seen in Jesus, but let's take a minute. It was also seen in the centurion, a Roman soldier. The Jews wouldn't have helped this Roman soldier. Jewish rabbis would have said, uh-huh, what, what do you get out of it? What is that boy to you? Jesus said, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll see your compassion. I'll see your faith. You've come to me. There was a real reward. The servant was healed. Jesus will be with us. He said, let's pray over him. You know what? Baptist, we can pray for people on their sick beds, fully aware and fully thinking that God can heal them should He choose. I don't know that applying some anointing oil may not actually help the process. Oh, but we're Baptists. We don't believe in that. Let's stop talking about what we don't believe in. And let's start talking about what the Bible says for us to do. Amen. Jesus Killed man as a way to lead them to faith. It was never convenient. It's never convenient in the middle of the night you get a call and somebody's sick and you need to rush off. Jesus didn't see the inconvenience. He saw the need. He saw the opportunity. People need us to be kind. Let there be kindness in your face, a quote. Let there be kindness in your face, in your eyes, in your smile, in the warmth of your greeting. Don't only give your care, but give your heart as well. You ever notice what, okay, somebody is at a funeral, they're at a sad, sad occasion, and they're, they're just down, and you see them across the room. I want you to try something, okay? You can even try it this week at work. Somebody's just down in despair. And they look at you across the room and you make eye contact with them. Smile. Smile at them. See this? This is a smile. Okay? Can you make one of those? Let's see. Okay? You know, don't make a false one. Don't make a weird one. Okay? Don't go. Anything, you know? Just smile at them. If you can, get up off your blessed assurance and go over. You know? It's good. Let people know there's hope. Let people know you care about them. Tell them you're going to pray about them. Write it down on a post-it note. Put it by your bedside at night. Pray for them. Let it be the first thing and the last thing. Every day, ask them about it. Hey, how's your cousin? How's your aunt? How's your mom? You know, don't, don't ask him in front of people. It embarrasses people. But just say, I'm praying for you. 
Send them an email. I'm praying for you. Care about them. Have some kindness that comes out of an inner source of goodness. What is goodness? Goodness is developing a thought life that centers on good things. Be careful what you feed your thoughts on. Violence and filthy things. The show gets dirty. Television show gets dirty. I don't care if all your friends are watching it. Stop watching it. If the language is bad, don't say, well, I'm a big boy. I can handle this. You're not big enough to handle it. Get it out of your life. The world is filled with selfishness and pride, but God wants us to develop a thought life that is based on the Holy Spirit living in our lives. Goodness grows from the love of God planted as a seed of spiritual fruit. All the spiritual fruits are planted as a seed of love in our lives. Okay? Goodness grows from the love of God planted as a seed in our lives. The seed is contained in reading and meditating on the words of God and on Jesus and then acting like Jesus in your world. Do you realize you're not perfect? I know I just ruined and shattered some of your worlds. I also want to tell you something. Your grandkids are not perfect. Okay? Jesus met a rich young ruler. He had everything in the world but peace. He called out to Jesus, Good teacher! Perhaps Jesus saw in that title that He saw Jesus as a rabbi healer, but not Messiah. Jesus turned to him and said, Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. Jesus showed God's goodness in His words and His actions. He is our Lord and example, so we should put our minds on goodness. Don't be thinking about how you're going to get revenge on somebody. How you're going to think about yourself and I'm above everyone else. I deserve this. I don't know why God's not taking care of me. And as He told His disciple Philip, if you have seen Me, you have seen the Father. How many times have I told you from this pulpit something I learned a long time ago? You want to be like Jesus? Read the Gospels and learn and see what Jesus does and copy it. Could your acquaintance say that if they watched you that they were looking at the Father God? Or are you filled with bitterness, smart aleckness? Do you care about others? Every act of kindness and compassion done by any man for his fellow Christian is done by Christ working within us. We need to let Christ work in us, we need to fellowship with others. We Baptists aren't very good about this. I hate every year when the Southern Baptist Convention comes around because I know a bunch of stupid men are going to say a bunch of stupid things. And that's the subject of another sermon. We need fellowship. We need laughter. We need to get to know each other. We need to listen to each other. That's what North Irving Baptist Church is. If not, then let's just stay home. His Son, He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Why and how are we to be judges if we are not good? Grab hold of the good of God. Plant it deep in your heart. David, who we talked about in the opening illustration, has no question about who he is. 
He's a serious student, a beloved son, a supportive brother, brother, and a humble Christian. But at his core, David is a hugger. There's, there is something in that small act of a hug, in that small gesture, which allows someone to switch their focus from negative to positive. I truly believe small, random acts of kindness have a big, big effect. Grab a hold of the goodness of God and let that flow through you into this next week. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word and for what it means to us. And may, Lord, it speak to us about the need for kindness coming out of compassion, coming out of love, coming out of our lives. And Lord, help us to be kind and good to each other. The instrumentalists will play now. As they play an invitation, if you need to come forward, is there somebody who God has said to you during this sermon that you need to be directing your kindness and goodness to either where you're sitting or down front here. Make that important step to commit yourself to it. If there's something else you need to come and pray about, the altar is open. The front aisle is open. You respond today. <laughs> Thank you.
except for uh, we needed the roller skating guy <laughs> for that. That was good. All right, stand. Get ready for your Benedictus. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. My Father, which gave them what me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Amen. John 10. Amen. God bless you this week. Use you with the confidence that God is with you. Amen. Amen.